This cosmic context figure from your textbook summarizes four major features of our solar system that must be explained by any theory that seeks to describe how our solar system formed. The first major feature is that the large bodies of our solar system have orderly motions. This oblique view shows that the planets all orbit the Sun in the same direction, counterclockwise as viewed from high above Earth's North Pole, and in nearly the same plane. Switching to a top-down view, we also see that although planet orbits are elliptical in accord with Kepler's first law, these ellipses are very close to being circular. Moreover, the small white arrows indicate that, with the notable exceptions of Venus and Uranus, most planets rotate in the same counterclockwise direction that they orbit the Sun, and the red circles show that major moons generally orbit in their planet's equatorial plane and in the same direction that their planet rotates. Before we continue, think back on what you've learned about the laws of nature to answer this question. Notice that the Sun also rotates in the same counterclockwise direction that the planets orbit. What law of nature explains why the Sun should have been rotating after it formed from a collapsing cloud of gas? Is it the law of conservation of angular momentum, the law of conservation of energy, the universal law of gravitation, or Kepler's first law of planetary motion? The answer is A, the law of conservation of angular momentum. This is because a collapsing cloud, almost inevitably, will have some small net rotation. So as it contracts in radius, its rate of rotation must speed up. In fact, the Sun probably once rotated much faster, but has transferred angular momentum over time to the planets and to interplanetary gas. Moving on, the second major feature is that the planets fall into two major categories, which we call terrestrial, which means Earth-like, and Jovian, which means Jupiter-like. In our solar system, the terrestrial planets are the four inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and we generally count our moon as a fifth terrestrial world. The Jovian planets are the four outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. They are actually much larger in comparison to the terrestrial planets than shown here. Comparing the categories more generally, the terrestrial planets are small in mass and size, relatively close to the Sun, made mostly of metal and rock, and have few moons and no rings. In contrast, Jovian planets are much larger in mass and size, orbit far from the Sun, at least in our solar system, are made largely of hydrogen, helium, and hydrogen compounds such as water, methane, and ammonia, and those in our solar system all have rings and numerous moons. The third major feature is that in addition to the planets, vast numbers of small bodies also orbit the Sun, represented here as swarms of individual dots. We generally call these asteroids when they are rocky in composition, and comets when they are ice-rich. Some of these small bodies are large enough that we call them dwarf planets, as is the case with Pluto, Eris, the asteroid Ceres, and a few others. Most asteroids and comets are found in three major regions of the solar system. Asteroids are concentrated in the asteroid belt between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Most comets are found either in the Kuiper belt that lies beyond the orbit of Neptune, or in the far more distant region we call the Oort cloud, which is roughly spherical in shape because its comets have orbits that are randomly inclined to the ecliptic plane. Our fourth major feature is that there are a few notable exceptions to the general rules described in the first three features. For example, while most planets rotate in the same direction as they orbit, Uranus rotates nearly on its side, and Venus rotates backward compared to its orbit. Another important exception concerns our own moon, which is the only large moon found around a terrestrial planet in our solar system. As you will learn soon, the quest to explain these four features led scientists to our modern nebular theory of solar system formation, a theory that not only explains the origin of our own solar system, but also explains the many other planetary systems now known to exist.